I've taught hundreds of students and many clients over the years the science of how the brain and body improves, many times through cool movements that make them feel pretty amazing when they achieve them. However, the thing that seemed to drive both myself as a kid and many of the young adults that come to me is wanting to do something big, to be unique, a person that's capable of doing amazing things that not most other people can do. Ultimately, it's them wanting to matter or have high value. But as just one person, how much can you actually make a difference? Do you have to be famous for your actions to even matter? Or do they hold a huge significance despite you appearing as just an average person? To spoil the video, it turns out the answer is yes. Chaos theory is a branch of mathematics and physics that shows how in a complex system, incredibly tiny, insignificant changes always lead to vastly different outcomes after a short period. The story goes that one day a meteorologist was working on an accurate way to predict the weather, and when entering one number among many to rerun a test, he accidentally rounded up just one single variable to 0.506 instead of using the full precision value of 0.506127. And he didn't think it mattered at all because the dominant notion in society was that with enough data you could accurately determine the results of any complex system like our society. But what happened from this one minuscule change was everything changed, and not just by a little. This had profound effects as researchers soon realized that any complex system like our world is unbelievably sensitive, making it impossible for anyone to predict the final outcome because of one variable like a person decides to suddenly act in a different way, the changes that occur can be laughably drastic. In my own words, people often underestimate not only what they can do, but by how much it will matter. So choose wisely. Chaos theory is the main driver lurking behind many famous concepts that branch off of it, with perhaps the most famous one that the same meteorologist coined being the butterfly effect. An effect that shows how stunned researchers, mathematicians, physicists were to find that something so meaningless, such as the flap of a butterfly's wings, could lead to such drastic changes, joking but not really joking, that a tornado would eventually appear in a different part of the world. And for us individuals, this proved how your actions to put in effort to make a positive change or not does impact the broader world in ways that are not immediately apparent at all. And maybe they will never be apparent. Even when you suddenly see someone you taught near a decade ago walks up to you and talks about how you inspire them to teach others, it still may not hit you how interconnected everything and everyone is. But I can hear some people, including my old self, asking a question along the lines of, don't I have to be famous? Or don't I have to do something so big and so grand for it to meaningfully shift the world in any way? As many of us have have seen and heard, fame has its ups and downs. Fame does give people the ability to amplify the reach of themselves or others. They can absolutely use it to sway people's opinions, influence them, set a trend within a group of people, inspire movements, and they can even use it to make things worse for people if they want to. Famous people can quickly help people or damage them if they don't know any better. You could become famous and start a long-term movement, or like many big influencers and famous people, you could do something that's more purely for entertainment that's incredibly short-lived. Fame allows you to be heard, but it does not determine how you're heard. It does not guarantee that you will deeply or meaningfully impact others. Because what you choose to do matters more than how many people know your name. Fame is a tool, never a requirement. Now we can get to the heart of something that took me a long time to realize, because I did didn't notice just how much most students from the age of 5 to their 50s were listening to what I said, actually taking it in. It took me seeing a 7 year old walk over to another student who was struggling and begin coaching him on things I had taught her for me to really start to notice. And while I couldn't control how people would react, there became a clear difference between how positive and negative behaviors spread. Negative behaviors such as horrible workplace gossip or sometimes negligent actions 
actions on the part of managers I saw is immediately disruptive, shameful, and often the person doing it is only focused on themselves, and in my experience, tend to lazily justify why it's necessary. However, negative impact, while being immediate in impact, can be very short-lived. Positive choices, selflessly putting down your own opinion and putting an effort to make something better, last far longer in any system. The way you can visualize how you fit into chaos theory is something called social contagion or network theory. Every one of us is a node in a vast network of equal size. And every action, choosing to clean your living space, how you treat others, even as researchers found your own emotions that you bring with you are incredibly contagious. Happiness, malevolence, choosing to lose weight, high-fiving a student for putting effort towards a goal, or helping out someone else all causes a sudden ripple to shoot outwards affecting the lives of others that are many nodes away from where you currently sit. Specifically, behavioral scientists found that acts of kindness were found to be exceptionally contagious. But this all boils down to one thing that will determine why, like me, some people will love you while others can't stand the sight of you. I saw how a great teacher could touch the life of many people as a powerful node, yet I've also seen a lot of nihilistic individuals who couldn't care less. I've done turnarounds on businesses where the person hiring just wanted a warm body to teach the class that quote, didn't matter and was in fact really easy. So I watched as students referred to these lazy teachers as the guy or girl that sits there and does nothing. Nothing. Nihilism is thinking that nothing you do matters, and this became an excuse by some to take no responsibility for anything they did, and instead lay there like a slug. Yet them sitting there and doing nothing was an action, a choice with a network impact. The only real outcome I saw was that even if they never believed in chaos or network theory, the experience these teachers had was miserable. Whereas for others and myself, it's at times been a real school of rock adventure. I still question how good or bad I really am, obsessing over how to make a class better, with every week being another opportunity to improve places where I may suck. Because in the end, my experience is so much better than if I made excuses to not work well with my co-workers, to make a positive, awesome environment than a toxic one, and you may not realize, like me, just how much other people, superiors, parents, students, literally everyone noticed is what you do and don't do. Believe me, I've seen teachers give me a smirky grin because they thought they were getting away with not teaching and sucking, but they weren't. Chaos theory comes back at you. You are rewarded and punished in ways you cannot predict, in both terms of when and how much. So if anything, do your best because it's your best shot. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved one fact for last. Most people I've found are afraid to engage in positive behaviors for others because they are afraid of not being good at it. But the thing is, your brain, even as an adult, can create thousands to millions of new connections a day, allowing you to go from sucking to being more amazing than you realize. And I found for people, it helps to know just how your brain creates connections so you do these behaviors that get you better faster. So I made a video specifically addressing that question in depth right here. Hope this helps, and I'll see you in the next one.